people are understanding something, are bringing peace in their lives. And you can be a part of the magic regardless of where you are. So, at least here I am in Chicago. Um, it's been, from what I was told, like 10 years. And I've been, of course, traveling, going different places, and bringing a message to people that I hope I can bring to you this evening. Because I know that in our lives, in our existence, so many things happen. There is no limit. 24 7, it's going on and on. People are responding, people are looking, people are thinking, and all the time. A question needs to be asked that whatever may be happening in my life at any given time, in the time of joy, in the time of pain, in the time of pleasure, in the time of suffering, whatever is happening, is it bringing me closer to me. Because if it isn't, and it's removing me from myself, removing me from myself, then something is drastically wrong. Drastically. Now, I know for a lot of people this becomes a very serious subject because there's always that question, who am I? Who are you? And even though a lot of people have thought about that question, there isn't a certainty of an answer. Nobody has got it pegged. Oh, yeah, that's what I am. Because everybody gets their information. Some people go read books. Some people have discussions. Some people follow this. Some people follow that. And I'm not here to try to present to you another path, another way, another idea, another philosophy. I'm really here to tell you, you're alive. Now I hear people laughing because they think that's too simple. I mean, gee, you know, did we really all just come here into this hall to hear uh, you're alive. I mean, come on, give me something more. Give me something complicated, something I can chew on. I can't chew on this. I mean, I knew that. I knew I was alive. Of course I knew I was alive, otherwise I wouldn't have driven here. I couldn't have driven here. <laughs> so, let's just try to understand what it means to be alive. You know the water vaporizes, comes out of the ocean becomes a vapor, becomes a cloud, 
it rains. Some places as snow, some places when it rains, drenches through the soil. And the source of many, many lakes, many, many rivers is a drop. I mean, the water just goes through its percolation process or whatever it's going to go through. And it emerges as a drop, and then for whatever, you know, wherever it's dropping from, however the height is, it begins, and it drops, 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 and then it merges with the water, and that's it. That's it. It becomes indistinguishable. You cannot now distinguish this drop. This drop is only a drop. In so far, it begins its journey as this solitary little mass of water. And it falls. And it hits the water. And that's it. It becomes indistinguishable from the rest of the water. That's a drop. That's the journey. Blah, bloop. <laughs> you see, you know, we read this, oh, life is a journey. You read that. You've heard that. Of course, they didn't tell you how long. Blah. Bloop. Finny. Just a mass of water now. Drop is gone. But, in so far it is a drop, It is, in this world, unto itself. Even though it came from the ocean, which at 71 point something trillion gallons just in the Pacific Ocean, God knows how many drops that would be. And it made this incredible journey. And then it emerged as a drop. And when it was a drop, it was individual. And it was beautiful. And no two drops are alike. And it could shine with the sun. It could take the light and it could pass it through. That drop is you and I. So when I say you are alive, I am saying something so precious so beautiful, so simple. That you really have to look at it for what it is worth. And it is worth everything. It is worth your existence. It is worth all 
your aspirations, all your dreams are in that. And what do you truly aspire? You aspire to be content. And a lot of people go, ah, no, what's he talking about? In our civilized world, it's called gratification. We do what we do to be gratified. If it doesn't bring us gratification, we really don't like it. Everybody has a list of chores they absolutely do not like to do. Why don't they do it? Because it brings no gratification. What does gratification mean? Look it up. It means contentment. Contentment. That's what it means. And ultimately, the heart's desire is just that, to feel that till this journey is afoot. From the time that it leaves to the time that the unavoidable will happen. This is the want, this is the desire to be. To be content. Now, everything that we do in this world is for that little contentment, for that little gratification, somehow, somewhere, that we may have that. People say, no, no. You see, people have already got their arguments all figured out against everything that I'm saying. Except they're not listening. They're already arguing. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't argue. Listen. I am not saying that you should become a monk and go on top of some solitary mountain and sit down and then, then you will have contentment. Mm -mm. Did you hear me say that? The people are already going, no, 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 no. Just, you know, live in this world, party. Did I say you shouldn't party? But if you're going to party, party the best possible way. Party. That's fun. Fun! And so here's the twist. Living your life consciously is the most fun a human being can have on this earth. Confusion is the worst nightmare because all it does is spirals you more and more and more and more and more the, up to the point that you've lost your clarity, your understanding, and indeed yourself. Now friends, I'm talking about making the choice. And the choice is clarity over confusion. And a lot of people go, well, it's not that easy. 
Why? 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 That is why it is so important to know thy self. That is why it is so important to know thy self. One example I give, people say, how are you? I say, you can't answer that question till you know who you are. Because only after you understand who you are can you say how you are. If you don't know who you are, how are you going to answer how you are? Because how are you supposed to be? How are you supposed to be? How are you supposed to be? Are you supposed to be in that grind? Asking God, why me? People do. Why does the bad stuff always happen to me? Why can't I be like so and so? You're human. This is a very human trait to go, I wish I was like that. I wish I was like that. I wish I was like that. We conjure up images of somebody who has achieved high levels of spiritualism. High, high level. <laughs> and what is it? No smile, serious. And what? He knows everything. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah, it's amazing. In India, there was this poet, Kabir. Around 1480, something like that. And Kabir said, oh, by the way, he said, it doesn't matter what kind of show you're putting on, this thing is going wild. Wild. It's going, it's going here and it's going there and it's here today, gone there. I mean, this thing, this thing can travel at speeds unbelievable. I mean, one day it's in New York, a few seconds later it's in England. No airplane can do it. Do you know Skype, where you can actually see the person and so on and so forth, FaceTime and Skype, they all started recently. There was a time you picked up the phone and you could already imagine the person's face even before they picked it up. That's connection. That could be a million miles away somewhere and yet, oh, I know who that is. Hi! This thing is going and going and going and going and going. and said, nobody is exempt from it. All the holy ones, inclusive. Wait, I didn't say that. Kabir said that. <laughs> inclusive.
Around the same time, did you know what was going on? Christopher Columbus was betting the earth was round, not flat. And that he could go the other way and get to the same place. Here is the situation. Kabir is in India, kind of where Christopher wants to get to. Kabir is already there. And Kabir says, what you are looking for is within you. Christopher set out to get to India, really had no clue that that's not how he's going to get there, ended up in the Caribbean, credited for discovering the New World, America. Of course, the world had already been discovered. There were people already here. It wasn't like somebody went, whoa, look at that, there's nobody there. It was not like an isolated, desolate island it had already been. But he was looking for India. And that's why when he came to the new world, he said, Indians. Now, obviously, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. They weren't Indians. They all had their own names. They had their own tribes. He didn't call them that. He went, in looking for India, Indians. Until this day, the mistake continues. Just do a search for Indian music. And you'll get American Indian music. <laughs> so, Kabir said, around the same time, said, what you're looking for is inside of you. Is that real? Have you discovered that space within you? Where that which you are looking for resides. Do you understand that certainty? Because as Christopher Columbus set out to explore an uncharted territory, Kabir too is saying, you become that Christopher Columbus and discover the world inside. You ready? How does it begin? It begins by simply understanding what that blessing is to be alive. Alive. It begins from that. It begins from that. 
that you are alive. That's the magic. That's your reality. There's a beautiful song written by one of the Sufi poets that says, this is a meeting of a few days. This is a meeting of a few days. And there is going to be a very long absence after that. There's going to be a very long separation after that. Think about it. That's how it is. That's how it is. This is the drop. I'm not here to scare you. How long do we live? 70 years, 25,550 days. Not that many. People go, no, but Americans live a little longer. This is true. But my God, even if you lived for 100 years, that's only 36,000. 500 Only 36,500 days. That's it. And after that, the drop will become indistinguishable. Is that good? Is that bad? Is that wrong? Should it be different? No. That's how it is. That's how it is. You can hate it and it won't change. And you can like it and it won't change. You can be indifferent to it and it will not change. Because that's how it is. And people have been trying to change it and 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 change it. We have our ego. Hmm. But I am so and so. I can do this. I have accomplished this. I have achieved this. Isn't this is what important? Look. Look what's happened to this world. Permeated by greed. By supposedly some of the finest minds and experts in their field. Permeated by If you have to be greedy, then be greedy for knowledge. If you have to hoard, hoard joy in your life, If you have to accomplish, then accomplish clarity in your life.
If you want to read, read whatever you want to read, but also read what is written on the pages of your heart. If you look for stability in this world, you will not find it. You will not find it. I was watching a documentary a few days ago, and this person, they, I guess, they lost everything. And that's what they were saying, I lost everything, I'm destroyed. And I just looked at that person and said, you look pretty together for being destroyed. <laughs> look pretty intact. Because that's how it is. Everything becomes conditional. My progress is based upon the markers that are laid out by this world, not by me, not by my understanding. And that is the fundamental change that needs to happen if you're going to find yourself. The scales have to change. That you are the source of joy. That the God that you look for is within you. That the peace that you need is not the world peace, but the peace within yourself. That the truth is not at the bottom of the ocean or top of a mountain, but within your own heart. My friends, until that happens, you are but just another face on the face of this earth. Many, many, many like you have come before and many, many like you will come again. There will be ideas, there will be shared, more books will be written. What is missing? There's more schools and universities now than ever have been. Do you know that? People are more educated now than ever have been. Do you know that? They have at their fingertips information, the WWW. And yet, and yet, there is more greed now than ever has been. The lack of humanity than ever has been. The indifference that ever has been. The value of life means nothing, just the value of cause is all that people care about. Kabir said, everybody came, did the same well, drew the same water out of the well, just put it in different pots. That's the only difference. We live in the same world. We have the same aspirations. The only difference is, you look different than I do. This is the pot. This is the pot. And in this pot, the same aspirations, same beauty dwells. Do you want to know? 
do you want to feel? Not believe. Not just say, oh yeah, okay, it's there. Good, thank you. Bye. Now I know there's something beautiful inside of me. Good. Back to normal. What is normal? Unconscious behavior. It is better to think a little and be conscious before you act than trying to lament that you would have done that before you acted. Because before you act, if you think, if you are conscious, you may make a difference in what you do, but no amount of lamenting will change what you have already done. No amount of lamenting. Do we act consciously? Do we get up in the morning and say, you know what? Whatever I do today, I want to be fulfilled. No. Head first. Head first. Ah, here we go. Here we go. And listen, I'm, I, I'm a fairly organized person. So do I have a computer? Of course I have a computer. Do I try to get everything on the computer? Yes. I'm not satisfied with the software that's out there. I'm actually, I used to program, I used to write programs, but I'm going to do it again because I'm not satisfied with the software that's out there. I want to write my own software. But even in that, I cannot forget. I cannot forget that I have to make most of every day. That's a reality. I'm not here preaching to you. I'm not saying, be like me. I, I, you know, I, I'm a good person. You, know, you, can, you can use me as the, as the example. No, 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 no. No. The process of making a statue You know what that is? Just simply remove all the other bits that are not needed. And there you will have it. What is? Every day has to be lived consciously. This I say to you from my own experience. Every day, fulfillment needs to be felt. This I say to you from my own experience. And everything that gets in the way of that is a major distraction. And every day, one has to try not to have the distractions in the way. Every day. People, I'm sure, when they hear that, every day, every day. Oh my God, I thought peace was this one thing you just kind of felt one day and then you were good to go. <laughs> Why do you want to feel peace? Why do you want to feel peace in your life? Because it's a nice thing. 
If it is, then don't you want to feel it every day? Indeed, every moment that is possible. This is how it can be. And this is how it should be. Everything else is a compromise. It's a compromise. So, enough water has collected that it looks like the drop will be forming. Slowly, this journey has begun. What is this moment? Was that too quick? That's it. That's it. When does realization come to people? When somebody tells them, oh, uh, you, you only have two more months to live. <laughs> all of us have incredible strength in us and all of us have incredible vulnerability. Do you have any idea how fragile we are? Do you have any idea how fragile we are? It doesn't take much. Done. Doesn't take much. Then how strong? How strong? When it is the inner strength of a human being, there is literally no limit. That is our strength, our fragility, extreme. Our strength, extreme. Between these two, we exist. Between these two, we are. One breath at a time. Right? Another one. Well, what are you talking about breath for? I breathe. I, mean, I, 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 I don't know how many times I'm going to breathe. Well, what is this breath thing? I don't see anything in that. You know the things that I'm talking about? If you don't see those things, if you don't see, if I say to people, your heart. And people go, what? I've never, <laughs> what heart? Where? I mean, what? If you don't see your heart, if you don't see the divine in you, if you don't see your strength, if you don't see the blessing that this breath is, that is because you are so far. So far away, can't see it. Come closer. Come closer to your 
self. And you too will see what I am talking about. There is a heart. There is a blessing. There is a recognition. There is an understanding. There is a value. There is a feeling. There is a thirst. A lot of people say to me, Raji, I don't, I don't feel the thirst. If you don't feel the thirst, it's because you're so far away. Come closer. If you don't feel that want to be fulfilled in this life, then that is because you are so far away. Come closer to yourself. The closer you come, the more clear it will become. One of the things that has always been said is to have the heart of a child. You know what that means? I was just in Toronto just a few days ago. I was. Toronto, and this is the first time I said, you know, come close to yourself. And then I've been thinking about it, and I've been talking about it, and it's like, wow, you know, it's really amazing. Because it's so simple of why we don't see something. It's because we're so far away from it. The further you go, you can see more, but with less resolution. That's just how it is. If you're flying, do you see little birds sitting on a tree? No. That doesn't mean that there's no bird sitting on a tree. Well, come closer and you will see that little bird sitting on the tree. And when I think about this, it's so simple. It's so simple. Of how, and how did we get so far away? From our own idea. Why? Because half our believing is not ours. Uh-uh. That's open the gas cap called the cranium, fill it in, screw it back on, and say, off you go. Heart of a child. That's why it is talked about, because a child is so close to them. you know that? Maybe you've never thought about it that way. But a child is not distanced from their own self. So close. They recognize, they understand their needs, their wants, it does not come from any motive. I need this, let me tell you. And that's it. No philosophy, no book. You know, a long time ago, a lot of parents, they were reading this one book written by this one doctor. And this doctor was wrong. I mean, really, really wrong. And, you know, I, had, I was born in India. And when I heard all these things that this doctor was saying, I just went, this guy's crazy. Crazy. So here we have our society. It is based on all of other 
people's ideas. I remember saying, how can a mother not know how to raise her own child? How many fish read a book? <laughs> how many frogs read a book? I mean, I've never seen a frog reading a book. Do they go about in this world doing their thing, trying to be happy? Of course. Gratification. 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 But we, I'm not against books. Don't, don't mistake me. You know, I'm not against books. But the world has gotten so strange. You say, well, you know, somebody will tell you, oh, but that's a fact. Why is it a fact? It was written in the book. What happened to you? When did you surrender thinking? Read. If it helps you, good. If it doesn't, let it go. You don't have to jump up and down. You don't have to yell, well, that was a bad book. No. Whatever comes to you, does it help you? But if you do not know yourself, how will you know if it helps you? People still ask, why am I here? And I'm like, well, what do you think? Could it be? When there is such a thirst to be content, could it be just to be content? To be in peace, to be in joy? To be in that tranquility, to be in that serenity, to be in that beauty, to be thankful? Could it? Does it feel good to have a heart full? Does it feel good to have a heart full that is drenched in gratitude? Thank you. That's what comes out. Thank you. Thank you for this life. Thank you for this breath. Thank you for this existence. Thank you. People then go, well, who am I thanking? What difference does it make? Whoever you need to thank will receive the thanks. Does it need to be said in English? No. Does it need to be said in Hindi? You know, when I first came to the West, everybody was looking for the Indian culture. And I was like, why are they, why are they so fascinated with the Indian culture? Indians are not fascinated by Indian culture. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And today, is there any shortage of swamis? Oh, my God. You would have to walk a certain way to avoid one. <laughs> Wherever you go, you will run into one. And the same stuff. Harping on the same stuff, same stuff, same stuff, same stuff, same stuff, same stuff. And what is the stuff? Not actually understanding a word of what they are repeating. That who you are looking for is inside of you. That without knowing that, you cannot attain that peace. So they keep harping that, but not taking it in themselves. 
is what happens. This is what happens. I'm here not to point to those things. I'm here to point to that breath being a blessing. I'd like to finish with a story. Once, and some of you have heard this story, but once there was a king, and he was a good king, and he has a dream. And in his dream, he dreams that he is lost to the neighboring king, and he's fleeing for his own life. He ends up in the jungle, it's wet, it's cold, it's raining, it's horrible, he's hungry, he's being scratched by the bushes. I mean, it's a terrible scene. He sits down and looks around, what am I going to eat? What's going to happen? I'm hungry, and he sees a little hut. He goes over to the hut, there's smoke coming out of that hut, and he goes in, knocks at the door, and he says, can you give me some food? The lady, the old woman in the, in the hut says, look, I, I don't have any food, but I can give you some raw ingredients. Maybe you can make your own food. So he gives him some rice, gives him some lentils, some salt, so you can cook it and eat it. Here's this king. He has to go get all these little you know, pieces of wood, and it's, of course, wet. He has to make a fire. He finally makes a fire. He cooks the rice and the lentils together, and it's too hot for him to eat, so he takes a big leaf, puts it all down, and he's waiting for it to cool in anticipation that he gets to eat. Just then, two bucks come fighting, take what he has on that leaf, and mash it up into the mud. In his desperation, I mean, this is it. He's hit the bottom. He lost the war, lost the kingdom. There he is. He's penniless. He's cold. He's miserable. He's hungry. And finally he had food, and that's gone too. I mean, it's like, what all is he going to lose? He starts crying. As the tears roll down his cheek, he wakes up. He looks, there's his palace, bed, soldiers, everything. But this dream was so strong, so powerful, that now he doesn't know which one is real. Was that real? what I saw in the dream, or is this real? That I'm still a king, that everything is good, everything is okay. So he's confused. He makes a declaration. Anybody who can answer his question of which one is it that's real, he'll give him half of his kingdom. Well, half a kingdom is not bad, so everybody tries. People come in hordes, all the swamis and the pundits and the, you know, Everybody is coming, 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 coming. Oh, that was a dream. No, this is a dream. No, that's a dream. No, no, neither that was a dream. No, that was that. Everybody, 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 everybody. And the king is very unsatisfied. Nobody can answer his question. Finally, one day, this man comes, and he's deformed. And he comes, and he said, you know, I, I'm, I'm here to answer the king's question. And the soldiers started laughing at him. He said, yeah, but, you know, anybody can do it, so I'm here to do it. So they had to let him go, and he walks in. There's the king's court, and all the ministers are there, everybody is there. And as soon as everybody sees him, they start laughing too. How's, how's this little guy, you know, all deformed, how's he going to answer? He doesn't look very... higher level <laughs> spiritual, you know, guide. And the king said, what do you want? He said, well, I'm here to answer your question. 
But I didn't know you were going to be holding court of the people who are experts in leather. Now this is a very derogatory thing to say in India. The king said, what do you mean? He said, well, they just looked at this. This is leather. And they judged by this that I cannot answer your question. They must be experts. Everybody was quiet. Whoa. <laughs> so the king said, can you answer my question? And he repeated the story. And this is what he said. He said, King, what you saw in your dream, that was a dream. And that was not real. But what you call a real is also a dream. King understood. The king understood. He said, okay, you can have half my kingdom. He said, half your kingdom? That which cannot make you happy, you think it's going to make me happy? Keep it. So, that's a little story I wanted to tell you. Because my friends, the journey of the drop is afoot. You are the drop. And quoting Kabir one more time, there is a drop in the ocean everyone knows, but there is an ocean in the drop. No ordinary drop. There is an ocean in the drop only a few know. Forget the few. Forget the few. Do you know? Because if you don't, you should find out that there is an ocean in this drop. The journey is afoot. And that's it. Shine. Be. That drop. That is full. Of an ocean. That's. Who. You. Don't you want to come close to your self? Marvelous. An ocean in the drop. That's your fulfillment. That's your contentment. That's your journey. That's your life. Be, be that drop from that point till it hits the water. The rest is very simple. When, can there, when there can be that admiration for the self, the rest is very simple.